Hey guys, I'm going to give you a very informal lesson today because this one is about toys. Yep, toys. Why? Because toys get past the cognitive mind into the lizard brain where your voice is really directed by the automatic nervous system. So we don't want to have to think too much. Sometimes I will t make you think too much <laughs> by teaching you anatomy or teaching you why we do certain things. But then we really need to get to muscle memory training and there's nothing like toys that can help you do that. So uh, some of my students, if you've, whether you're late teens or early teens or a kid or in your late 80s, you have undoubtedly played with one of these toys in your lessons. So I know you'll recognize it. And for those of you that have never been for a lesson with me, I want to introduce you some of the th uh, to some of the things that I use. All right, we're going to start with the very first thing I ever learned to use as a toy. When I first started teaching so many years ago, I noticed that if I used a rubber band, I could get people feeling the feeling of pulling. And that you can't use the rubber band straight up or straight out, but it's 45 degrees. And if I go then you'll notice that I'm pulling my rib cage open and my head open. This is the feeling of pulling your voice instead of pushing it into being. You might want to get one that matches your shirt like this. Kind of does. Next, I want to show you a toy that I looked for for two years before I finally found it because I could remember it from when I was a child. And uh, I think it was in Mississippi, my my grandfather, when we would go back to visit, uh, I think he had one of these things and uh, I always always loved to play with it. But I, no I noticed that when I use it, and it's called the Martian Popping Thing or Panic Pete, it's got several names now through history. I don't know why it changed its name, but you know what I'm saying, it's a toy. So if you squeeze the bottom of it, then you'll notice its eyes, ears, and nose bug out. Yeah. All right, our eyes and ears don't bug out, but our throat opens and our rib cage opens. If we squeeze it from the bottom and make ourselves do the same thing. And then this translates to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's another toy from my childhood that I remembered. Um, this is a, kind of a rudimentary version of the thing. It's a spinner uh, or a whirly gig. And I'm winding it up a little bit, but then after you get it wound up a bit, it self-perpetuates the, the, the stretching. Um, and there's a disc in the middle, obviously, a little cardboard disc in this one. I imagine it's my voice spinning right in the very middle of the pull above and behind me and then to my audience. And again, it's that feeling of pulling instead of pushing my voice for power. Another thing that anyone that ha plays an instrument that's been for a vocal lesson with me has probably seen is the back scratcher. Or if you're like me and have a husband that's a drummer, or, or in a studio where they usually are, the drumstick. Well, these toys are good at widening your rib cage without you having to think about it and opening your throat. And they're great in the studio. They're also great with vocal exercises. So if I go, yeah, 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 Okay, or if I'm singing, um, Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even, brightly shone the moon that night. And I'm not even thinking about my hands, I'm just, you know, using them. And again, that translate to, translates to singing with an instrument or the feeling of pulling when you're holding a mic. Another toy I like to use in, in uh, vocal training is this slinky. And I'm particularly 
fond of the metal one because I like the way it sounds. And this reminds my students to both set up the notes that they need to get to that are difficult and follow through. Because if you just do one or the other, that note can be very difficult. I like to walk it down the stairs too. Another toy that I discovered I absolutely love working with, and I like it better than the straw. It's a little balloon. It's a little two inch balloon. I think they call them water balloons. But um, I use them to get breath support and breath control balanced. So you have to both blow into it and hold back. And if you go, you can see how that works. Or if you sing with it, all right, it teaches you to manage your air. Another thing I like to play with to manage air is bubbles. All right, if you blow a bunch of little bubbles, whoops. <laughs> Well, I can't blow them. There we go. <laughs> That's blowing too hard. So then I'll tell the student, okay, instead of blowing a bunch of little ones, just blow a big one without thinking about it. Oops. Well, There it is, woohoo, all right. Okay, what did I have to do to change from little bubbles to big bubbles? I had to pull the blow. I couldn't blow that hard. And another thing that I use for the same reason is a candle. So the good thing about a candle is it doesn't lie. <laughs> So you want to hold it really close to you and it's best not to have that glass around it. So you can just have a pillar or a tea candle even works and sing into the candle and make it dance, but don't blow it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a when a poor man came inside, gathering winter fuel. I did that on purpose. And here's a toy that I love, okay? I use this with even men, and it's a rather brightly colored one, but it's a hula hoop. And it's for people especially that are a bit stiff. All right, if I go, I can fix you, I can teach you, I can make you see the light. You can run, but I can get you. Trust me, I can fix you. Yeah. Now I'm gonna show you something that I learned from my classical coach, Mark Tress. We trade lessons. Uh, you'll see that on the internet if you search out and, and his name and my name and I'll also leave a link. But he learned about the BOSU ball from his vocal teacher, Dr. Scott McCoy. And it's another way besides the hula hoop that can keep you from being stiff when you're singing. Whoa, because if you get stiff, you'll fall off of this thing, trust me. <laughs> so if I'm going, I can fix you, I can teach you, I can make you see the light. You can run, but I can get you. All right, it really keeps you moving. <laughs> I also use my mini tramp over there for the same thing. I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into toys and how they can help your voice. If you would ever like a lesson with me, uh, please hit me up at judyrodman.com and I'll help you figure out what toys work best for your voice. If it's the holiday season for you, like it is for me right now, happy holidays. If it's not, toys work anyway. <laughs>